Bibles now and we declare it as we mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I, I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will do what it says I should do. Today, while I hear from the word of God, I declare that I shall live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands in his presence and give glory to the Lord. Thank you Father. Lord Father. Hallelujah. Lord speak to us today Lord Father. In Jesus name. Amen. We'll turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. It says like this. The writer of Hebrew writes here for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works just as God did from his let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience for the word of God is alive active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul, spirits, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of heart. Hallelujah. This is the word. I believe um, this is a very important word for the season that what God is doing in this land. See, from the beginning, you can see that um, God, uh, God's pattern of working is when he, um, on the seventh day of creation, God took rest, as the Bible says, after creating everything. Bible says in the seventh day, he took rest, and that is the nature. When God created all his creations, including man, it was designed in such a way that and a part of its day, it has to go for a rest, a time, um, a season, a time for rest every day. In certain animals, you can see in certain weather conditions, they go in hibernation. They go in a state of rest. And when that season is over, you, what, what we can see is they come back very strong than ever before. So rest is a design of God. In, um, um, from the beginning of creation. He, he intends, um, he doesn't um, design things to just non-stop, work non-stopping. Seven days, all through the year. He doesn't design like that. God designs things that there are certain times in its life that it should go in, in a time of rest. A time where it would settle down. A time where it will come down from uh, skip every, everything that is doing. Stop. And you know, in Psalms, if you, if you um, um, go through the Psalms, there are certain words. Most of the Psalms are songs, as you would know. Songs written by David, songs written by musicians. And um, every Psalm you can see, there is a word called Selah. Word Selah means stop. And all the musicians, they would stop. They would stop. And after that, when, when, when the beat would continue, that's the way of worship. They stop and pause. Hallelujah. The meaning of rest in Hebrew is, the Hebrew word of rest is nauk, to rest, to be quiet. It means now. Hallelujah. A similar word is Sabbath. Sabbath means to cease what you do and to take rest. Hallelujah. That, is, that was in the Old Testament. God commanded them to take Sabbath in certain areas, certain times. A Greek word of rest is anapaios. 
meaning to be seized and to be refreshed. Hallelujah. So rest, rest is connected with being re, re, refreshed, to stop um, what you're doing and to get refreshed. Hallelujah. See, um, when, when, uh, when God intends, rest means every creation in this world is under this uh, same principle. Not just for man, not just for animals. It is also for every creation, even for the land, even for earth, moon, stars, and every creation that God has um, 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 created. You can see, if you look closely, there is a time for rest in every creation. All the planets, they rotate. You know, there are times that the light would come to its, its surface, but there are times of darkness where there is, where, uh, there is a time that it will be um, um, full of high temperature, say it goes to, um, earth would go to a temperature of up to six, 50 degrees, 60 degrees in certain deserts. And there will be a time on the other side where it come down to zero. Hallelujah. Because that shows rest. This is how God intends. You see, in Leviticus, if you read a verse, Leviticus chapter 25, verse, verse 2 to 4. It says, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land, I shall give you and the land shall have Sabbath to the Lord. See, land, is ha land should have a Sabbath. And it says, six years you shall sow in your field and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in the crop. But during the seventh year, the land shall have a Sabbath rest. It, it doesn't say that you should have a Sabbath rest. No, you should have a Sabbath rest. But this is the time that the land have to take a rest. It's a time that land have to take a break. Hallelujah. You can't just uh, put your seeds every day. Every day, keep on watering. Keep on putting manure. Keep on fertilizing it. You can't just keep on plowing the land. Now God is commanding the land to take rest. Hallelujah. It's a time that the land should go in rest. There is a season. Hallelujah. And it says, um, you shall not sow in the field nor prune your vineyard because that vineyard will go under rest. Hallelujah. This is, there is a, there is a third, certain time that God intends for the earth to take rest, for the land to take rest. Hallelujah. The most uh, um, interesting part is um, Le Le Leviticus chapter 26. Um, it says, uh, verse 33. You, however, I will scatter among the nations. He's, he's, God is speaking to his people. Because they did not give rest to their land. They were keeping on working hard and hard and hard every day, every day, every day. Every, every, all throughout the years. You know, they were just working hard, plowing, putting seeds, you know. And now God is saying, see, I'm going to do something very, very uh, significant, you know. I want to give rest to the land that I have promised. Because this land is the land that is holy. And you can't just go and work, work, work and destroy it. And now God is saying that, however, I will scatter among the nations. And I will draw out sword after you as your land become desolate and your cities become waste. And the land will enjoy its rest all the days of desolation. While you are in your, in your enemy's land. And the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbath. All the days of desolation. It will observe the rest which I, which it did not observe your Sabbath. Hallelujah. Because you did not give the rest that was meant for the earth, meant for the land that I gave you. Now I am going to send you into captive. You know, such a powerful word. Such a powerful word. God values the nature. God values, the, uh, the Bible says all his creation are waiting desperately for the, for the Son of God to manifest one day. All the creations are waiting, are waiting. 
Hallelujah. See, this is the principle that God works with. Sometimes when there is, a, when, when man pollutes it in such a mighty way, man just keeps on digging and digging and plowing and plowing, putting manure, putting all the poisons. God intends to give rest to his creation. Hallelujah. See, this time God is saying to, his, to, to the children of Israel that I am going to send you into captive the same amount of time that you did not give rest to your land. When you are away, this land will be in complete rest. Land will be, will be refreshing itself for the next season. Hallelujah. Archaeological de department agree, would agree with this. They say that every year if you keep on putting your seeds, putting manure, putting fertilizer to your field, afterwards all your um, soil will, start, will be dead. And there will be no, nothing coming out. You know, there was, there was a revolution in, um, in India at a, a time of um, farmers, um, you know, farmland, all those, you know, the time that there were fertilizers introduced. And in, the, in those years of 1960s and um, 70s, there was a great revolution because um, new types of fertilizers were in, introduced, new types of farming techniques were introduced, and th they called it as a revolution of farm. And, but you know what? In those times when there was there was high um, profit coming out of farmland, there, there was a lot of um, fruits coming out, a lot of um, uh, you know all, the, all everything was um, plentiful, lands were plentiful. The scientists warned the politicians that you should not do this. The thing that you are reaping now will stop after a certain period of time. You can't put your manure, keep on putting, putting, putting. You can't just do the farming all throughout without stop. No, you have to give rest. But they did not listen. This is history and this is marked in, in, in the chapters of history of, of the farm. That is after some time of period, they started to realize that the land become, became dead. There was, they could not farm. They, they were not receiving anything like before. In certain time, they stopped receiving the um, back, uh, receiving it back. They were, uh, uh, most of the fields were empty. They could not get after certain time, after certain years, after ten years, after 20, fifteen years. This it stopped because the, the the land was not fruitful enough because land is dead. See, this is the same principle. B Bible says. There is a time to rest that God intends. You know what is happening all around the world. You can see the devil, when the devil plans, comes as, as um, sicknesses, as lockdowns, are, and everything that would lock you down. The plan of God is there will be a rest given to the earth in certain period of time. This is, how, if you want to check, you can check that I, I was um, reading certain statistics in, uh, coming out of Asia. What they said was, because of the pollution um, they had um, in so many years, um, last 10 years, 20 years, there was so much of pollution all over. The climatic ch um, climate uh, of the whole earth was changed in certain period of time. But because last one and a half and a two years, the pollution, because of lockdown, all the pollution came down. There was no, most of the air was clean. What they witnessed was the forests um, in, in those areas are more, uh, the, it's producing more oxygen than before. There are more animals. There are, the count of tigers, bears and lions has gone up. You know, everything. It started to, you know, this is what um, uh, uh, happening in, a, in an world which we are not noticing. Things are coming back to order. God puts things in order. When they will bring certain uh, weapons, it is not that um, he is having the last laugh. Always God plans accordingly. 
to bless his land, to bless his creation, to bless everyone um, in, in the surface of the earth. This is what God's intention is. There is a rest being given to the earth in certain period. Hallelujah. It is not that God is, has gone to sleep. This is, a, this is a time for rest for the nature. Hallelujah. And not only that, the dictionary word of rest means quiet, calmness, tranquility, peacefulness, serenity and stability. Hallelujah. You know, but the sad part is the children of God, many times we forget that there is a rest intended by God in our life. God intends, uh, what he plans for us is certain times of life. We had to take some rest. We had to rest in his presence. We had to rest in his promises. We had to rest in his faithfulness. Hallelujah. As God intends, we can't just keep on working, keep on working, keep on working. Hallelujah. God breaks certain patterns of life just to give us a rest. So that he may refresh you for the coming days to come. For the, so, so that he may renew you, refresh you, um, um, revive you for the coming years. Hallelujah. That is a divine plan of God. Hallelujah. The first thing um, of um, first intention of God to give rest for his people is that we may humble ourselves in his presence. Hallelujah. Psalms 116 verse 7 says... Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Hallelujah. Very reason to rest is when we humble ourselves and say, Lord, you are a good God. I rest from whatever I am doing. I rest myself because you have created me. I rest in your presence, thinking about your goodness. Thinking about what you are to me. Hallelujah. God's, um, when um, um, God's chosen Israel, when he commanded them to take Sabbath, is, is, to, is them to realize that it is not their hard work, but it is the goodness of God that is keeping them. It is not they are going and working hard every day that is keeping them blessed. It is a lesson from God that when you learn to rest in his faithfulness and you learn to rest in his goodness, God will take care of you. God will take care of your future. God will take care of your, for your circumstances. Hallelujah. It is not like, you know, many times this word rest is misinterpreted, especially in Australia. When you think about rest, when, when you say um, to somebody, close your eyes and imagine rest. They would say that I see a beach. I see a, you know, a holiday house. No, that they are all true. But resting in the Lord means, it doesn't mean that you had to go to a beach, run around, um, or um, go, to, go to a you know, hotel or whatever, um, um, apartment, rent an apartment near the beach side or go to a mountain top. No. Resting in the Lord means um, trusting God for he is good. Hallelujah. It's uh, stop what you're doing in certain time of uh, certain period of time. Stop what you're thinking. Stop uh, stop whatever lifestyle you're doing. Maybe spending too much time in the social media just stop it. Stop it. Hallelujah. Stop listening from the world, uh, world and start resting in the word of God. Hallelujah. A certain time God has designed every day that you have to stop doing what you're doing. And listen from the word of God. Hear from him. Um, rest in his goodness. Hallelujah. Every day before, before um, going to your bed. Take a time of rest in him. And say Lord I thank you for your goodness. Lord I thank you. Hallelujah. This is what it is. Psalms um, 116. That is what it says. Return to your rest. O my soul. Soul means your thought pattern. Soul is always very active. Even if you're sitting somewhere, I was um, I'm speaking to somebody and, um, you know, um, he was sitting there very peacefully and I was thinking, what are you thinking? I just w wanted to interact and uh, I was asking him in the canteen, what are you thinking about? Then he started his uh, thinking list. 
it started from sydney's covid to world in uh, in afghanistan to the uncertainty in sri lanka and i i heard that um I, after uh, after the long list uh, uh, his concerns about the president of us and uh, what they did to saddam hussein and everything and every all the list was nearly getting over and i stopped him and said did you think all this in this 5 minutes and he said these are all the worries that i am <laughs> going through you don't have god doesn't des design you to think and worry about the president of us the god doesn't uh, want you to worry about the things that you are not in control of you are not in control of afghanistan because you are not running the show the but god wants you to rest in his promise certain time what god has placed where god has placed you he want to rest in him and say that lord i trust you and i know that you are in control of my life you will be with me and that is what return to your rest o oh my soul all the thought pattern hallelujah i can see many windows here but i don't know what you're thinking about maybe you're thinking about what i what i'm going to eat after this maybe you're thinking about uh, how about this evening what i'll do i don't have anything in the kitchen hallelujah my husband is not taking care maybe you are thinking about your kids hallelujah that is what it says but david says soul come to the rest hallelujah kids may be thinking that the lockdown would go up further and further forever hallelujah but i don't know but that is what our soul is doing our thought is always active always active always active hallelujah but bible says you have to give rest to your soul rest your thought pattern have to rest hallelujah see second thing what we um, oh, the reason god says um, that we have to rest is to evaluate ourselves and repent hallelujah it's a time of repenting it's a time of evaluation self evaluation hallelujah there's a wonderful verse in psalms 139 says david says search me o god know my heart test me and know my anxious thoughts see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting hallelujah in the period of rest we don't take rest so that we can watch netflix we take rest so that we may ask god to search me we are not going searching searching in the google for things you know you search everything and now you're searching what people are searching more you know we are not doing that now we are search we are asking god to search me search my heart search my life search my pattern of thing search all my decisions lord did i make anything wrong did i take any wrong decisions that i had to come back and correct it lord is there any steps in me that i have done wrong that i may i should have correction in me Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 says, Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask the ancient paths where the good way is. Walk in it, find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. At times when you take rest, you look to those ancient paths, the ancient pe the people who were who have walked before the pioneers of faith how they walked with god uh, apostles of god how they took decisions in life hallelujah many times this is the time when we stop and look to those ancient paths it says go and ask the ancient paths go and ask the apostles and the pioneers of faith how they achieved it by walking faithfully with god hallelujah there are times that we take rest and go to our mentors and ask for for guidance for prayer hallelujah this is what we do in the time of rest we we children of god we don't look go bef go after the world but we go after the ancient paths the pioneers of faith hallelujah who has led us in the faith we go to those paths and and seek them pray with them spend time with them Hallelujah this is what we do in the time of rest third thing to rest is to trust him in everything you have to trust god for your past for your present 
and for your future. You had to start trusting God that your past failures is being erased. Your past sins are being forgiven. Your past iniquities are being taken away. You're trusting God in this season. This is the main thing in that we are doing in this season. Trusting God. Hallelujah. A time of Sabbath was given for uh, Israel. So they would stop do what they were doing. Trusting God for the future. Trusting God for the present circumstances that they are going through. And trusting God for what he has done in their life. For every sin that they are, God has forgiven, they trust God. For, for every situation that they are going through, they trust God. For the future, what God has kept for them, they trust God. Hallelujah. In, this, in those time, on this day of Sabbath, the message was very loud and clear. It's not worrying about, oh, I couldn't go for work today. I couldn't do anything. No, it's not about worrying. But it is about trusting God that God will increase my time, increase and bless me for I have put my trust in him. Hallelujah. A time of self-evaluation, a time for trusting God. Psalm 62 says, find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Hallelujah. Can we say it together? I will not be shaken. Verse 7 says, My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Verse 8 says, Trust in him all time, O people. Pour out your heart to him. For God is your refuge. Hallelujah. Trust in, in him. In the time of arrest that you decide, Lord, I want to trust you. I trust you. This is what you're declaring. This is what you're believing. Hallelujah. I trust you for the finances. I trust you for my generations to be blessed. I trust you for every word that you have given to me, Lord Father. I trust you for the, those words that you have spoken in my past. I trust you. Hallelujah. This is the time that we take. Separate from other things. And you look to the Lord and say, Lord, I trust you. Even if I don't see anything, but I trust you. I trust you for my health. I trust you for my life. Hallelujah. Shall we lift our hands and say, Hallelujah. 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 This is what we say. Acts chapter 12 says, the night, this is what trusting God means. You can see a, an apostle of God. Night before Herod was bringing him to trial. Apostle Peter, he was sleeping in, in between. All the chains were there. People are the, but, but one of the Hebrew verses, he was sleeping peacefully, very peacefully. Hallelujah. Because somewhere, even in the midst of trials and tribulations, this man was sleeping there saying that, my God, I trust in him. Hallelujah. The one who has promised is faithful till the end. So I trust him. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about what will happen tomorrow, but I trust in him. He, he um, lay down in that prison peacefully. This is what it is. Uh, rest means no, um, not, not resting from um, um, you know, other things, but resting means um, what is happening around doesn't influence you. Resting in him. Hallelujah. You are not worried about things that is happening around you. That is a gift from God to be, stay calm, stay peaceful. Stay trusting God no matter what happens. Hallelujah. There was a wonderful lady who was persecuted. Very, very rich lady in France uh, in the second century, third century. She, she, because of her faith, um, the um, soldiers took her, took all that she had. You know, she was a very rich, uh, very well-known uh, personality in, in the French town. And uh, they took all what she had and she was thrown into prison. For many years she was persecuted. Persecuted. You know what happened? The jailers and the uh, officials, they thought that this lady has something wrong with this lady. Because she had every reason to cry. But whenever they talked to him, talked to this lady, she had a very... Um, 
a glorious face and a, and a wonderful smile in her. Hallelujah. Seems like nothing has influenced her. She, no discouragement has influenced her. This lady was, would smile and always be happy. Always happy. And this, this is what they wrote. And when they asked about um, why are you so happy? You have lost all your possessions. You don't have anybody in your life now. And there is no reason for you to be happy because you have been persecuted and you don't have any hope to coming out of this prison. And this lady was with a smileful face. She would say, I know because my God has given me rest inside and I don't know why I am not sad. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm not worried because God has inside of me. He has put so much of peace and happiness. Hallelujah. This lady is um, sending a strong message to the believers today. The lady who lived long ago and died there peacefully, smiling. Hallelujah. And entered the rest of the Lord in eternal life. This lady is share, sharing a strong message to the church today. Be in rest with the Lord in what God has spoken to you in your last, last past uh, days, past years, what God has spoken into your life, what God has placed in your life. Be in rest because he is in control. Hallelujah. He will give you peace in whatever you are going through. He will give you peace in, in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The verse that we heard a li little while ago, that's in Acts chapter 27, where Apostle Paul was, was traveling in a ship. When everything was without any hope, this man stood up and said, be cheerful, be cheerful. Hallelujah. There are storms all around the sea. This ship is nearly wrecking, but there is complete peace for a man of God inside who is seated. Hallelujah. This is what it is says. Be at rest when you don't see any reason to smile. When you be at complete rest in the Lord, when even there is trouble all around. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 8, you can see Jesus resting in, 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 in the boat when there are storms striking all around, when there is uncertainty all around. Hallelujah. You know why? Because before they started the journey, Jesus said one word, we will go to the other shore. Hallelujah. We will not drown. We will go, come, we will go to the other shore. This one word was enough for the disciples to stay calm. Hallelujah. But they forgot that Jesus has spoken that we will go to the other shore. They were, they were panicking. They were walking. They were, you know, there is a word. When there is a word that is released in your life. Hallelujah. This is what it is. When you, when you don't believe it, you will start panicking. When you put your trust in the word that Jesus has spoken into your life, you, you, will, you will stay peaceful and you will start resting. Hallelujah. In this time when God has commanded rest to the whole earth, this is what we are saying. Lord, I trust you because doors will be opened one day. Hallelujah. I will be renewed. I will be refreshed. I, and I will be full of your strength when I come out of this season. Hallelujah. When doors will be opened, God will use me. God, there will be a great revival. There will be a great latter rain season that is coming. Hallelujah. When the church goes to rest, it doesn't go, it go behind the world, but it will rest in the promises of God. It will trust in the goodness of God. It will wait and listen from the Lord. Hallelujah. A season where God, God's people goes to rest means they are prepared. They are getting prepared for a new season. Hallelujah. Next reason for God's people to take rest is to look back and thank God for the Lord has bought us thus far. Hallelujah. This is the time that, you know, many, many, um, many of us, we forget to look back. There, are, there will be a time of pause, with the, just like Selah in, in, in the song list of Psalms. We stop and look back for, for whichever way that the Lord has bought us. In 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12, you see prophet Samuel doing a very prophetic thing. 
He took a stone near the borders. Verse 12 says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up in between Mizpah and Shane. And it named it, and he named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. In this time of rest, hallelujah. Turn back to the time that God you have found your faith. You have started your journey. Turn back, and, and this is the time to thank him for his faithfulness. And say, Lord, I thank you for you have brought me thus far. You have brought me this much. You have been faithful with me all through these days, through all through these years. This is the time that we turn back. Hallelujah. John chapter 10 verse 40, you can see this is the same thing that Jesus did in his ministry. There will be a time that you had to stop and you had to go back where it all started. John chapter 10 verse 40 says, Then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. There he stayed. Hallelujah. Just before, um, um, in the peak of his ministry, where there was there was so many things happening all around. Suddenly, he t in in the next season, before going to the cross, before teaching them um, 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 uh, about about the mysteries of, of the Father's heart, he took a break in John chapter ten, and he went back to the place where he got baptized. Bible says this is the time that you go back and say, Lord. I come back to that first love that I have been, I have met you. Hallelujah. Maybe uh, you, um, uh, God, um, you started your journey in your, in your um, age of schooling. Maybe you, your faith, you started while, uh, while you were, um, you know, um, in different areas of life. Some, some people said, um, I started my journey uh, where I didn't have anything in my pocket. Emptiness. Hallelujah. Go back to that place and say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I come back and I acknowledge that I started from nowhere. I started from this and thus far you have bought me. This is the time of thanking God. Hallelujah. This, this is the real essence of Sabbath where God wanted them to remember his faithfulness. God wanted to remember his goodness. His mercies, hallelujah, how he has helped them, how he has been with them all through times of trouble, all through times where there were doubts all around, where there was impossibilities all around, how God has been with them. It is the time that we remember, turn back and remember. Rest is a time that we look back and say to the Lord, thus far you have bought me. Hallelujah. The fifth one, fifth, word, fifth thing that we have to do in the time of rest is to listen. His still small voice. Hallelujah. Many times we, we don't recognize the voice of God just because the things that is around you is too loud. The thing that is around you, that is, it is too loud. I, I always remember while um, we used to, um, you know, in certain areas that when, when we travel in certain mountain tops um, like um, long ago when you tune your radios from the early morning three o'clock three thirty in those times in, in olden times you could see sitting from in the parts of asia india when you tune your radios sometimes certain frequencies from far land like Japan, like um, Australia, all the ra some of the radio stations which are very feeble will be very clear in those times. Because all the other signals are down. Hallelujah. When all the other signals are down, you tune your radio and you can hear something that is from far away. It's voices, um, songs that is from far land. In olden days, if you, if you, in not the digital era, but in the time of analogs, and you know, long ago, you ha if you if you have come across the, um, in 90s and 80s, um, the transmitters, um, uh, radios. If you tune it, in in, in those times like three o'clock or four o'clock, even two thirty at night, because when the when uh, this is the time 
that um, sometimes uh, the voice of the Lord is always small and still voice, as the Bible says. When you want to listen to it, there is a price that you have to be at rest. Hallelujah. If you are too busy, many times you will fail to recognize that God is speaking to you. When you are too much in stress, you fail to recognize that small, still voice that is speaking to you. When you are busy with your social media, when you are busy with your movies and things, and when you are busy with your work schedules too much um, in, in your laptop, in your computer, hallelujah, those busy schedules will block sometimes the small, still voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15, this is something very important. I feel the anointing that is God is speaking to many hearts right now. For thus says the Lord, God, the Holy One of Israel, I am returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. Hallelujah. Bible says in those quietness, when people think that you are doing nothing, Bible says that that is your strength. The time that you spend in your quietness, listening and tuning your transmitters for the wavelength of the Holy Spirit, that is your strength. Hallelujah. God speaks when you, when you in your willingness, you know, that is how you hear the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. In quietness and strength shall be your strength. In this coming days, this is what we are going. So we are going to um, um, stay away from what you were watching. Stay away from what you were doing. Keep some time alone with the Lord. Tuning our transmitters. To, um, listening from, uh, from the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to hear his still small voice. Hallelujah. One thing that I have experienced is when, when your daytime is quiet, when you, when you, when you decide in, in certain days that you decide, Lord, I want to spend more time in your presence. I want to spend more time. I want to listen from you. In those times, after, uh, in your sleep, I, I, have a, I have personally experienced that God starts speaking so much with dreams and visions. Hallelujah which you have never asked about. You will be started seeing dreams. Hallelujah. If you are so much, you know, somebody was um, um, telling like, uh, um, I don't know why I'm um, dreaming about an elephant that is chasing every day. And uh, I, am, I am dreaming about um, a, a snake that is coming all around. And I see eagles and I see birds chasing me. And I asked him, are you watching Discovery Channel too much? Maybe when you, dis when you, you know, he, he was saying, yes, <laughs> Discovery Channel is the main thing that every day I watch. <laughs> if you watch too much of Tom and Jerry, then you can see that the Tom and Jerry is going to chase you at night. Hallelujah. But when you start, when you decide that, Lord, I want to spend more time in your presence, then the Holy Spirit will start speaking to you. When the mercies of God will start chasing you. Hallelujah. Goodness of God will start coming behind you. Hallelujah. If you are watching too much of no, new, news about Taliban, you will soon you will start dreaming about people coming before behind you with guns and bombs and things. Hallelujah. But we are not going to do that in the season of re rest. Hallelujah. We are going to say, Lord, I want to hear your still small voice. Hallelujah. A man of God would seek the voice of the Lord. A man of God will, will decide that I want to hear your voice, Lord Father. Hallelujah. The most important thing then, sixth one, is to seek his presence. Hallelujah. The, the time of rest is the seeking of his presence. This is what Moses um, was promised from the Lord. Exodus chapter 33 verse 14 says, Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will Give you rest. Hallelujah. What a beautiful promise that God has given to the child of God. My presence. There is rest in his presence. When you seek Lord. I want. I want your presence. All over my life Lord Father. When you. When you. Uh, give certain time of your week. And, and your certain time of your day. 
for seeking his uh, voice. This is what follows. He will, his presence will come around you. His presence will, will be around you. In your bedroom, in your prayer life, in every way. You will start walking in a, in a divine purpose. Whatever you do. You know, this is what happens in the, in the presence of God. When, you, when, you, when the presence of God is covering all around you. Things, whatever you start doing, even in your foolishness, there will be a will of God. Whatever you do, miss, even in the mistakes, you will start seeing miracles. Hallelujah. I'm not making it up. I have experienced it. Hallelujah. Sometimes um, in, uh, when you're covered with the glory of God, when you're covered with the presence of God, some things that you forget will turn out that is good for you. Hallelujah. Some mistakes that you do unintentionally turns out that is a blessing for you. Hallelujah. Certain words that you say without thinking turns out to be very prophetical. Hallelujah. This is what God, God speaks. This is what the presence of God will do to your life. Hallelujah. The presence of God is to be enjoyed every day, not just in the worship season, not just while we are hearing the word. The presence of God is there to enjoy all throughout the life. Hallelujah. This rest is not just for one week. Bible says this rest is for all throughout our life. God has designed his children to enter his rest. Bible says the Israelites, that's what we read. Israelites in Hebrews chapter 4 says, They were disobedient and they failed to recognize the rest of the Lord. They, were, they, could, they did not have faith and they failed to recognize the rest of the Lord. Hallelujah. Disobedience and, and lack of faith will take away the rest that God has intended in your heart, intended in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's blessing will follow you. Psalms 91. We'll read this verse. And, and um, while, before we close, we'll read this verse. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. This is what God wants us to do. Rest in Him. Hallelujah. Not to trust our own ability not to trust in all our faith, not to trust in our strength, uh, everything, not to trust in any blessings that God has given, but to trust only in God alone. Hallelujah. We trust in God alone and we rest in his shadow. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. Hallelujah. This is what happens. Hallelujah. When you decide, Lord, I want to rest in you. I want to rest in you. You will come back on wings like eagles as Isaiah chapter 40 says. Hallelujah. Those who wait on him shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings like eagles. Hallelujah. Rest is not to put you down but to use you in the next coming season more mightily, more strong. Hallelujah. Because in the rest of the Lord you will find the strength in his quietness, you will find your strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. While the Lord is speaking. Hallelujah. Put your trust in him and say, Lord, I trust you, Lord, Father. For who you are, Lord, we trust you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we trust you, Lord Father, for every word that you have spoken, Lord Father. In this season, while there is no doors we can see that is open, but we trust in you, Lord Father. While we humble ourselves in your presence, and while we turn back into our life to say, thus far you have bought us, Lord Father. Lord, we see your faithfulness that is covering us, Lord Father. Hallelujah. We take refuge in your strength, Lord Father. We take refuge in your, in your faithfulness and your goodness, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Shedala mana daria kare si kare amana da kere daria kuriya. Oh, mama kala mana start raising him right now. Hallelujah. Di kere under the daria kushi bala mana bala mana. I could feel a mighty peace that is that is being flown in this place. Hallelujah. 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 A still small voice of the Lord says, I will take care of you. I have take care of you in your past. I am in control of your present and I will take care of your future. Hallelujah. Those who call upon him shall never be put to shame. Dekha ushadala manadariya. Hallelujah. Shall we lift our hands in his presence while we worship him? There's a mighty anointing and the presence of God that is flowing in this place.